Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time and space (laughs) and that you are bringing good luck to you, to yourself and accepting good luck for a positive outcome. In fact, one big way you can bring luck into your life is to always expect a positive outcome no matter what it is that you do in your life. So if you're going on a date or you're going to a job interview or you're going to work or to a family reunion, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Just expect a positive outcome. Even if you're just going to the store, to a department store to buy a new wardrobe or a new outfit, expect a positive outcome. Maybe visualize it beforehand that you get through it fine and whatever results you want, you visualize and imagine it before you leave the house and, well, then ask for a little bit of luck. (laughs) Maybe ask your luck angel. Maybe there's a lucky angel out there that will help us. And how did this come about, this conversation right now? (laughs) <laughs> right before I started, I uh, wanted to have a couple of sips of water here. I had a glass of water and I barely touched the glass. It spilled water went everywhere. And I'm like, what does that mean? Because I, I didn't like knock over the glass. I barely touched it. And I thought, well, wait a minute. The, the water spirits wanted to tell me something. So I looked it up on Google and it says, Spilling water for luck. Spilling water for luck, according to wikipedia.org, is a folk custom in Bulgaria, Serbia, and Turkey and other nearby countries. According to folk beliefs, spilling water behind the person who goes on a journey or to go to do a job will bring good luck. And it's done so that the travel or the job will end happily. It's practiced when you're going to school, when you're going to take an exam, when you're on your way to a job interview, even if you're going into the army, anything in which you're going to go do something specific you need luck for, eh, spill a little water. You know, pour one out for your homies, maybe. (laughs) But in this case, your homies are you. (laughs) Pour one out for yourself, I suppose. Not beer, actual just water. (laughs) In the ethnology of the Balkan Peninsula countries, it is considered that spilling or running water symbolizes mobility and ease of movement. Because water does not stop, it doesn't get stuck. It's kind of flows, right? So spilling of water is done that the job someone started will go as smoothly as the spilled water. At the very act of spilling water in some areas, it is said, let him go clean and clear as water. I think this is a little bit like saying going with the flow, right? Letting, you know, water roll off you. Like it rolls off, you know, or let this this situation or trouble roll off you like water off a duck's back, right? So, I don't know, this weird thing happened and I thought, well, you know what, that's got to mean something. Because I, last time I spilled water, I don't know, I mean, when I'm pouring water into a glass from like a five-gallon container sometimes it splashes out but as far as spilling water I haven't done that in a very long time so I thought that was very strange it was just like I this this uh, glass I have here it's a uh, very bottom heavy it doesn't tip over easily it's very hard to tip over and I barely touched it I thought well yeah I gotta look that up <laughs> so alrighty um let's see here I just have the most amazing website queued up. Okay, all right, there we go. (laughs) And I'm like, I just, I thought I just deleted it now. All right. So yesterday, 
Oh, is it yesterday? Yeah, or, well, not last night. It was the night before last. I, I told you yesterday I was going to tell you the story about the rattlesnake. So the night before last, I'm laying in bed, and just like the anaconda story I told you guys before, and other, you know, and other animals do this too, but snakes are really strange because the energy of a snake, they will get right up in your face. Um, when they're in spirit form. So I'm asleep or, or starting to fall asleep. I laid in bed and I was all cozy and I was getting all comfortable and had just shut my eyes. I started to do my um, Ho'oponopono process that I do. Um, I think I was doing my Plu Ara Sa, which is a mantra given to me by uh, the Pleiadians. Uh, if you heard the last Pleiadian episode of uh, Michael Sherhan, of Ashar command, you would know this one and why and how to use the plu a ra sa energy. But I was doing that. I was doing Ho'oponopono a little bit. I was asking God to bless my people, which means all of you as well as my family and friends. And then in the, in the general, you know, greater people, you know, everyone I know, everyone I don't know sort of thing. And I was just at the tail end of that and was about to fall asleep when, lo and behold, I felt this energy of a snake. And it was just coming up slowly, like from my feet. And then next thing I know, it's in my face. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just my kundalini energy. You know, energy flows and it feels like something's there, but there's usually just the energy. And then all of a sudden, in my a psychic eye vision, my third eye vision. Next thing I know, there is a rattlesnake staring me in the eyes with its kind of, um, kind of its, uh, steel blue eyes staring right at me. And I could see its little nose and its little mouth and its little bluish tongue. It's bluish black tongue that's forked on the end. And it was like coming out and I thought it was going to lick me on my face like on my nose <laughs> or my lips. And it was like right there, right in my face. And again, like with the Anaconda story, it felt like he was going to like be there. If I open my eyes, there's going to be a rattlesnake in my bed. And I felt his very dry, rough skin near me. Like I just felt like he was kind of coiled up mostly around my stomach area, but his face was right in my face. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I know there's not a snake in here. I mean, I'm on the third floor in an apartment building. I mean, unless someone put a snake in my apartment, there's no way that that's real. I opened my eyes real quick, and he wasn't there. Whew, thank God. Okay, close my eyes again. And I'm all, hi, what do you want? How are you? You know, like, what the hell? Why is there <laughs> this venomous, poisonous, scary-ass snake in my face, right? But I gave it love because, you know, anytime an animal spirit comes to me, there's a reason. So, all right, maybe he's given me a snake medicine, you know, and I'm just going to love him and accept anything he's here to say. And so I said, so, um, what's up? You know, hey, what's, what's, what's going on? Why, why are you here? What, what, why the visit? You know, and he said, well... You might not remember me, but I used to be a member, or, or not a member, what did he say? I used to be a inhabitant, I suppose, of the L.A. Zoo. And he says, I've been, you know, gone a long time, but when I was in the L.A. Zoo, and you were a very little girl... Everybody went to see all the animals and all the snakes, and the boys were hitting on the glass and the girls were telling me that I was gross or disgusting or, you know, they were afraid of me and people were talking bad about me. And in the midst of all that, you were the only child that gave me love and sent me love. The whole time I lived in that zoo, I was taunted and made fun of and I felt people's fear and disgust and negative energy towards me. 
my whole life there. And yet you are the only person that sent me love and I felt it. And I wanted to thank you for that love. And I wanted to know if it was okay if I could energetically bond with you while you sleep tonight. I will protect you and give you my energy and and my love. And I said, okay. And I fell asleep and this, the snake was coiled up with me all night long until the morning time. I just thought that was a very interesting thing that happened. (laughs) I mean, I have woken up to have uh, polar bears and brown, you know, big, huge brown bears, grizzly bears in my room laying on top of me or on my bed. Like I could feel their uh, spirit body energy on me. Sometimes the bears get scared. They don't want to go to heaven without telling me that they've passed because I knew them when I was in heaven as an animal trainer. And if you don't know about that, I did have an episode I did called I was an animal trainer in heaven. So every now and again, I get animals that have loved me or that have passed, you know, long time ago, but they'll come back and see me. And sometimes when animals die, um, now, you know, they'll come and hang with me for a couple days before going all the way, moving on all the way. I've had my cats that died years ago, even if they've been reincarnated. I've had the energy of cats come and just lay with me and hop on my bed. Sometimes I've seen part of my covers go down, like there's actually an energy being there, like like an actual cat was on there. I've had cats come and walk up my legs, and I could look and see like a paws moving <laughs> as they're walking up my legs, but I can't see them because with my physical eyes, you know, so I've, I've been visited by a lot of animal spirits, but every now and again, so it gets a little spooky. Like, like with the, the rattlesnake at first, I'm like, Ooh, what, what, why are you here? You know, but, but rattlesnakes, you know, they tend to be scared and, they're a little bit, they're aggressive, they're, they can be angry, but the thing is with rattlesnakes, if you give them love and respect, they can be energetic healers and teachers, and they, they can give you love, actually, they, they are, they have the ability to feel love, and there is a book I highly recommend if you can get your hands on this book. And it's called, I think it's called Kinship with All Life. I can't, I can't remember the name of the guy, but it's so incredible. And he got interested in communication and energetically bonding with animals when a fly came and befriended him. Like when he was writing, the fly would end, would like land on the end of his pencil and and look at him or when he's typing, it would be on the screen or on its, on his keyboard. And this fly followed him around for three days. And he started to telepathically communicate with a fly, just a common house fly. And this fly lived like extra long, you know, they don't live, but 72 hours. And this was a full grown fly. And he stayed with him for three days. He's like, what the heck? This is so weird. There's a fly that lived extra old, <laughs> extra long. He even, I think he even shared part of his food. Like, you know, when he's eating, he'd be like, here you go. This one's for you. And the fly would eat it. It would understand him. And he started getting in, really interested in communication with all kinds of animals. And he met a trainer who, an animal trainer, and she worked with rattlesnakes and other snakes and he was like how could you communicate with them they're aggressive and horrible and everyone hates them and I mean there's even snake roundups in Texas where people will go even in New Mexico and they'll go out in the desert in the desert into the rattlesnakes home round up as many rattlesnakes as possible and they throw them in a pit and then they just kill them they just shoot them it's really cruel it's very horrible They're one of the most hated animals. 
And yet this one came to me with so much love. And he just wanted to, he's like, I just wanted to say thank you. And something I learned, what he told me is that the rattle has a very specific energy that's needed on the planet. So when they rattle their rattle, usually it's for a warning. And it's pretty incredible that it, that it actually developed this way anyway. But it's a warning, but also it's a vibration. It's not a scary vibration. It's a pretty good vibration. And I think what it does is it cuts through the negative energy of a space. I mean, if you're out in the desert and you hear a rattle, of course you'd be scared because, oh God, you know, because they're venomous. You can die from a rattlesnake bite. (laughs) But I thought this was a really weird and interesting thing that happened to me the night before last. Like, yeah, all right. (laughs) This... It was such a sweet energy, such a sweet snake. But in the book, Kinship with All Life, he watched as this rattlesnake got very, it was very angry and kind of aggressive. It was mad. It had been captured. But this lady put on these gloves and just put her hands up near the cage of the rattlesnake and just sent it love, just beamed love and smiled, just so much love towards the snake. And after a while, the snake calmed down, the rattle stopped rattling, and it came to her, and she was able to pet it and hold it. Because that's all she does is give love to the animals, right? And I guess that she was, like, hired to calm the animals down, <laughs> like an animal whisperer. Like, I don't want to be a snake or a rattlesnake whisperer anytime soon, but... The snakes are very delicate. Even the rattlesnake was telling me, you know, snakes can be very delicate and rattlesnakes are more delicate than most snakes. And that's why a lot of rattlesnakes are afraid because their neck bones are very, very uh, fragile. If you fling a rattlesnake, it will die immediately. It's very, it's very scary and very sad for the snake. So this guy was, this little guy was telling me, you know, we're always kind of aggressive and afraid. And that's why we sound off our rattles. But we have a great deal of things that we can teach on a spiritual level that most people don't understand, except the Native American people that live in the areas where where we live, is what he told me. They they understand our our snake medicine and why were necessary to the ecology of a place. And and they respect us. But anyway, I guess when he was captured, maybe, I don't know if he's bred in captivity or captured very young, but he was really grateful that at least I sent him love. And I can't imagine an existence, whether you're human or an animal, where you're captured and you're put in a cage where people hate you all day long, your whole life. It made me very sad for him. It opened up my heart and and he gave me compassion. So maybe the cutting through the negativity and having compassion, that might be the secret and hidden meaning behind the existence of a rattlesnake. At least for me, that was a lesson that I learned by having his spirit visit me. So I thought that was very sweet. I accepted his energy and his love back. And it was very, very deep, very profound. All right, let's get into our normal thing that we do every night. Um, Disclosurenews.it Their chart did not have any gaps or breaks, so their equipment in the past 24 hours has been absolutely working. It's been very much active. The big number is 87 from them. It's funny to me that these these people who are light workers and doing all of the energy reports of the planet and stuff 
that they only go to this one. This one woman was making such a big deal the other day about it going up to 50. And I'm like, 50 is nothing. You know, on my show, I'm putting out seven different numbers. And usually the one from Italy is like the lamest number. It's always like seven, 10, 20. Like when it was 50, it's like, wow, it finally did something. You know, but like when you look at the other numbers in the 200s and 300s and 100 range, like, or 150 range, it's like the, these numbers are always very low compared to the other, to especially to the Heart Math Institute. You know, and it's kind of strange, but this person made a big deal out making a, a video today about 87. Ooh, and I had put a, a note on her thing going, hey, by the way, you know, 50 is nothing, go to this website, you know? And so apparently she ignored that advice or didn't, maybe she didn't see it, but oh my God, I don't know guys. I hope you enjoy getting the reports because looking at what it says here on the, this website, it's like not all that impressive when you see the rest of the world, you know, what's going on there. But what it says at 8.30 UTC time, we entered the third consecutive day of strong activity after a few hours of pause at the local time midnight passage from 22 UTC on, a new powerful movement began with amplitude variations that reached 40 hertz at first to arrive with a gradual increase up to power, power 87 at 8 UTC. And then... The 1330 UTC report said today up to now, it's been almost a total whiteout for several hours from seven to nine, 10 to 11. The amplitude was constantly above power. I hate that they're saying that uh, 70 Hertz frequency with various exceedances of, or above, I guess the threshold of 80, the highest peak that still remains previously reported. So the 87, the, uh, and then they says, they say, they says, they say another 1330 report, which I'm assuming is a 1730 report. Considering the beginning of this powerful movement indicated on the graph on October 27th at 5 a.m., the almost continuous period of activity continued for 65 hours. So at least there came some kind of activity over there in Italy. You know, it's not as impressive as the other numbers of the other websites, but at least it's something, right? All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to the Heart Math Institute and let's see what they have to say. Um, oh goodness. Here we go. All right. This website's not always responsive right away. Okay. California start off at 85. See, it's like you know, it's two less than the Italian one, but the only one that's lower than the Italy one is in Northland, New Zealand. We'll get to that in a minute. So California started off at 85 hertz frequency, and they went up to 89 by 4 a.m. at midnight. Uh, Hofuf, Saudi Arabia, started off at 240 hertz frequency. But they went pretty far down to 177. See, 177 is a lot, a lot more than uh, like 80, you know? Like, it's kind of strange. Anyway, that's at 4 a.m. And uh, Lithuania started off at 127 hertz frequency and went down just to 126. Not that big of a deal. Um... Let's see, Alberta, Canada started off at 135 hertz frequency, and four hours later at 4 a.m., they went up to 141. Northland, New Zealand, like I said, it's only at 55 hertz frequency, and they went up to 59 by 4 a.m. Now, this is the biggest and most surprising one of the day. Now, I mean, 240 was Hofu, Saudi Arabia, but guess guess what? Hulului, always the winner lately, at 354 hertz frequency at midnight. They, they went up to 359 by 2 a.m. and down to 330 hertz frequency by 4 a.m. 
And this one does say hurts. This doesn't say power. I, I don't. It's so strange. Why would we be, take something scientific and change it? It just still bugs me. Virgo. I want things to stay the same. <laughs> Virgos don't deal with change very well. All right. Um, in A Course in Miracles, we have now entered into the fourth review already. This is lesson 141. Is a review of two different lessons. So it's basically the very first thought for lesson 141 is my mind holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with God. And from lesson 121, the idea is forgiveness is the key to happiness. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. And lesson 122, forgiveness offers everything I want. Forgiveness offers everything I want. And again, the main idea for the day, my mind holds only what I think with God. That's it. There's no other words or explanations, just those three sentences for the whole lesson today. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm going to um, take a quick break. When I'm done with my break, I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you guys just about some basic stuff, um, (coughs) excuse me, relating to crystals. Uh, Let's see here. (coughs) I'm going to talk about um, some crystals as, you know, including rocks or, you know, minerals that have emotional and spiritual healing qualities. And I channeled most of this information directly from the divine before I started the show. And so most of these ideas come directly from the one will, the prime creator. More might come as I uh, continue with the show. And then I'm also going to go to a website that talks about the physical uh, things you can do with with these rocks and and crystals. You know, for example, what body part or, you know, hormone system, hormonal system or endocrine system or whatever, what uh, these work with. So I'm not going to go through all of the crystals because there's thousands, I think, but I'm going to go over some of the basic things. If you walked into um, like a rock store, you're going to find all of these there. If you walk into a new age store, chances are you're going to run into most of these. And if you go into um, like a gift store, like in the frontier land at Disneyland, for example, most of these will be there too. So these are the most popular ones that you'll find. Anytime you find a little table with um, buckets on it filled with rocks, for example, or bowls filled with uh, crystals, usually these are the ones that you're that you're going to find. So. Maybe you'll learn something if you've been studying crystals. Maybe you know all this information. But again, some of this stuff is new from Divine. Um, Some of this stuff has never been recorded anywhere, but will be tonight. And some of this, um, and a lot of this, if if you're brand new to this idea, this is going to be all brand new information for you. But um, no matter if you're, very well familiar and well versed in this or if you are just a little bit knowledgeable this is going to give you a good basic guide I might go over uh, later I might go over um, you know meanings of you know crystals too maybe I'll do a crystals too episode and we can learn more about them and I'm also at some point I want to do one on gemstones because that's a whole nother level, you know, like sapphires, rubies, diamonds, emeralds, those kind of, you know, semi-precious gemstones as well as precious gemstones. 
But for tonight, we're just going to go over crystals and crystal healing just for the basics right after this message. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined, To support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. All right, so what are crystals? and rocks like why why should we care other than they're pretty to look at you know they're like eye candy from the earth (laughs) it's a it's a lovely gift given to us from the planet and created by the one will prime creator but it wasn't um until the 80s that suddenly out of nowhere crystals became extremely popular and kind of mid 80s mid to late 80s all of a sudden everyone had to have their crystals everyone had to go to the new age store to pick up their you know the rock that speaks to them and it became like a whole thing right now ancient peoples knew the secret um thousands of years people have prized uh, gemstones as well as crystals and rocks for various properties and a lot of the knowledge has been around it's just that it wasn't in really really popular uh, culture where almost everybody just had to get their hands on the right kind of quartz (laughs) for whatever reason until um, the 80s you know and now it's been I mean, now it's been like 40 years, almost 35 to 40 years that it's been popular. You, you could just walk into any new age bookstore. And even if it's a bookstore, you're going to find the, um, like crystals will be there. They'll like be at the checkout counter or, (laughs) you know, be like a basket you could buy or might be just some three or four pieces that's going to amplify the energy of the store or purify the energy of the store. You can't go to a home and garden um, fair without even, you know, without seeing somebody that has crystals, you know, crystals for your home. (laughs) I went to a place in Nevada City 
a, a crystal place. And this lady said, Oh, I do. I specialize in making fireplaces out of crystals. And she showed me pictures and one of them just, I mean, even the energy of it leapt off the page when she showed me a photograph of a rose quartz crystal fireplace that she had done with all the points pointing out. And she said the energy of the fire amplified the beauty and the energy of the rose quartz itself. And it's beautiful because, you know, some people build like a fireplace and then around the fireplace they have wood, which can burn. But she said, even if the house burned down, the the fireplace will still be there, right? If it's rose quartz, but it gives a gentle energy of love. And she does amethyst and rose, and she does a mix and of different gemstones. And then she also just sold, you know, rocks and crystals and whatnot in her store as well. But I thought it was very, very interesting. Um, just all the various ways that I've seen people use rocks over the years. You can find enormous uh, geodes that you, you cut open and there's crystals inside. And I've seen people have geodes that are amethyst geodes that are really, really tall, like taller than me. And they're thousands of dollars. I mean, you could buy them and amplify, amplify the energy of your home, but you can use crystals to heal yourself emotionally and, uh, you know, or psychologically, um, you know, mentally, you can use them to heal physically You can use them to meditate and clear energy spiritually, you know, in your spirit body. You can use crystals to communicate with other people, um, other beings of light, angels and the like. Uh, In the world of technology, they use crystals in watches. You ever heard of a quartz watch? You know, quartz crystal technology? It helps keep the time. It's very cool. I mean, throughout all of our different, I don't know, different parts of society, rocks and gemstones and minerals, they're all helpful to us, you know, in various ways. So anyway, I wrote down a quick list earlier today and I just, you know, I'm, I'm always connected with my spiritual team I'm always connected with Prime Creator. So I started writing things and I just, he was telling me what to write. So I was just writing what he wrote, you know. But um, I wanted, before we get into what these crystals, you know, what meanings these particular ones have, I'm going to talk to you about a few things. So uh, when you're picking out a crystal or a rock, how do you do it? Well, number one, I'm going to say this right off the bat, size matters. It really does. I mean, something that's an eighth the size of your teeny tiny little baby fingers, fingernail, is not going to amplify a whole lot of energy. But if you've got a big honking crystal the size of your hand or the size of your head, that's going to generate a hell of a lot of energy. So I've seen these little teeny tiny uh, quartz, um, you know, clear quartz um, pendants that are like maybe an inch long. And then on, on top of that is overlaid silver. And on top of that, the teeniest, tiniest little teeny, teeny, tiny rocks every color of the rainbow and that's supposed to help you align your chakras and I'm like they're so tiny that's going to do absolutely nothing except to look beautiful and remind you to clear your chakras but it's not going to do a whole lot not really not these teeny teeny tiny little little tiny crystals and the ittiest bittiest colored rocks 
And I've seen some of these from China, and I think I ordered one one time just because I thought it was beautiful, and it got to me, and I'm like, I think that these are not really rocks. They're plastic on top of a crystal. And that's kind of a disappointment, you know? But I knew it wasn't going to do much anyway, but it's nice to have the reminder, you know? And so if you want to use something like that as a piece of jewelry or as a statement or a reminder of your spirituality. And by statement, I mean, you're going to tell other people that you're spiritual by wearing a piece of jewelry that symbolizes the seven chakras. Like a lot of people will choose something like that, or they'll wear it with like a yoga t-shirt so that they're going to attract the people that are also meditators that also do yoga, that also know about the aura and the chakras as well as crystals. Like a lot of people will wear these things kind of as a, a, a silent symbol of bringing like-minded hearts to them, which is kind of cool, right? Just the way that hippies, you know, would throw up the peace sign in the 70s and then you know that, oh yeah, that person, they believe in peace too and all right, you know, if you uh, buy a VW van, it's kind of a hippie symbol and you don't know until you own one that all of a sudden everyone's throwing you the peace sign and all the other VW owners will throw you the peace sign and it's almost like you've just joined a secret club <laughs> that you didn't even know you're a member of when you bought that VW. It's it's kind of a cool thing, you know. So I like crystals. I like working with them. Anytime I've ever seen anybody wearing crystals, I I especially if they're like on like um uh, a woven um you know, like they weave the uh, fabric like cotton cords or leather and you could kind of tell that that person's really connected to the earth and they're very, they want to at least be grounded and they want to um, imbue the energy of the stone that they're wearing, you know. And even people that don't have New Age beliefs will wear polished stones or cut stones and that's, a little bit different but what I'm talking about is the, the the crystals that people wear on necklaces that they come out of the ground they wash them off and they make them into jewelry boom just like that instant you know not polish or cut or doing you're making it like a special way you know to be beautiful like the to me the most natural the more beautiful um, crystals are the ones that just the way that God made them, that's, that's the beauty. That's the ones that, to me, have the most appeal. So size matters. And also, if they're not cut and, you know, shaved off and made into a certain shape to look good on a certain piece of jewelry. I mean, I feel like that's just cutting into the power of the crystal and the energy of it, it itself. Um... When you walk into a place where they're selling crystals, the first thing you need to look at is, uh, you, I think the first thing you should do is take a few deep breaths before you enter the store. Clear your energy on all levels. Walk in and keep an open mind because you never know what's going to attract you today, right? So you walk in, you look around, and what is the most attracted to you. Yeah, the crystals will be vibrating and be attracted to you, okay? So if you vibrate or have the same resonance as a specific crystal, it's meant to be yours. And sometimes if you pick up a crystal, it will feel like a humming or an energetic, like just a combination of your energy and its energy will be a harmonious vibration and you'll feel it. You'll feel good in your hand. You might end up walking around the whole store with that in your hand and you can't put it down. You don't want to put it down. It feels good and it might not be something you normally like. It might not be your favorite color. It might be even an ugly color to you, but it might have a healing quality that you need. So what crystal is attracted to you and what crystal are you attracted to? Okay. So once people 
buy a crystal. One of the first things they want to do is um, clean it. And I do agree that this is a very special uh, thing that you need to do. So number one, it depends on what it is. Okay. Don't do this to selenite because it will melt. (laughs) It's like salt. It'll just melt. So, um, but most in Malachite don't even get it wet. We'll talk about that in a minute, but most, um, crystals you can run under water. If you ideally have like a river, you can wash it off and that will cleanse it naturally, but it's okay. Just run it under. You can run it under the faucet for, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, you can also, um, make your own holy water, which we've talked about before with rose essential oil, a couple drops in the water with a little bit of, um, natural sea salt or Himalayan pink crystal salt or Cusco, um, you know, mountain salt from Peru also has the minerals in it, but it's also natural, which in and of itself is a form of a crystal. You can melt that in a little bit of water. Um, purified or spring water of course is better water that you've left standing for 24 hours so the chlorine has dissipated and evaporated out is ideal mix that with a rose essential oil um, and just ask for blessings ask your holy guardian angel or the divine to bless the water and you could whisper prayers over it from whatever or your own words in general if you're not religious and make your whole holy water. You know, you could do like a pen, you know, like a pentacle energy over it or the star of David. If you're Jewish or connect with that, I do. I'm not Jewish, but I do connect with that. Or, um, you know, the Islamic symbol, if you're Muslim and you connect with the moon and the star or anything that's going to make you feel good, like a pyram- pyramidal shape or whatever, whatever makes you feel good, you know, go with your instinct because that's the, um, highest vibration for you personally. Okay. No right or wrong. Okay. So you can invoke, um, the name of God or, uh, your, uh, holy guardian angel to bless it. Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel or Oriel, whoever, uh, will, um, be most aligned with your purpose for that water, holy water, but you could sprinkle your crystal with it, or you can submerge it. You can also put it in the sun for a full day and, you know, turn it over halfway through the day and that will um, charge it with the energy of the sun. You can blow smoke over it um, or wave smoke over it from sage or sweet grass um, or cedar, whatever you have, um, or incense, just regular old incense will work too. Um, that also uh, kind of gives the energy of fire as well as air. If you want to just breathe deep and after you've cleansed your own aura, you could just blow on it and, and cleanse it with your breath. If you are more apt to cleanse something in the earth, especially if you have something that has a lot of negative energy, bury it in the earth. You know, put it inside a bag. You know, don't you don't want to put your crystals directly against the dirt. You can, but. I prefer not to because Virgo, Virgos don't like to get dirty usually. So, but you can bury it in the earth for a month or a week or three days, whatever you think is right. You're going to go with your intuition on this because only you know what's right. You could bury it for one day and if it doesn't work, bury it again. Bury it in the earth. Just let the earth uh, subtly take all the negative energy out and put positive vibratory energy into your crystal. So those are ways that you're going to clean it. Uh, You have to clean it energetically as well as physically. But always, I think you need to respect the crystal. It comes with a little being that is attached to it. There is an energetic vibration to it because there's a a spirit that, that comes with it. So you have to respect it as if it's a little being that, that came to live with you. You know, so there's like little fairy spirits that, that come and they're attracted to, to these guys. And, um, I have one in my hand right now. So as I'm saying, as I'm, I'm kind of talking to the crystal as I'm talking to you guys, 
because I, you know, you have to hold your crystal and say, I respect you. I love you. Thank you for being in my life, for choosing to be with me as much as I chose to be with you. You know, there's like a, a mutual energetic, um, exchange between you two. So a lot of people believe that you should program your crystals to help you in this or that or the other thing. Should you program your crystals? I don't think so because number one, crystals have their own energetic force. They've got their own little being attached, but also a lot of them have already been programmed from Lemuria, from Mu, from Atlantis. Sometimes if you get the right kind of a crystal, you're going to get something with energy from someone who lived thousands of years ago. They might have already programmed it and you've got to figure out what the programs are. You could clear it if you don't like the programs, but maybe you're going to learn about their life at that time. It's very possible, but should you program with your own stuff? I don't think so. I don't think so because I feel like you're going to interfere with the purpose and the energetic force of that particular crystal anyway. And I think that even though I'm going to give you the general meanings and, um, energetic, you know, uh, basic energetic, uh, programs that come naturally in general with these, sometimes you might get one that particularly speaks to you for something that you need. And maybe that one has an extra energy that, you know, like say you pick a turquoise you like, maybe that one's going to give you something that all the other turquoises don't have. You know, if you find the right one, it might speak to you in a different way. So I don't think you should program it. I think that they come to you naturally as healers and teachers, you know, and it's very native American way of looking at it, but you know, maybe it's part of my Cherokee heritage that brings me to this, um, conclusion that you shouldn't program it. You should respect it. You don't force your will upon something else. Maybe it's just common sense. I don't know. So, um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, we're going to start with quartz crystal, uh, just plain quartz. It's just white or see-through looks a little bit like glass. Now you could get, um, a single terminated or a double terminated uh, quartz and a quartz crystal um, terminated means the ends that are pointy so if you have one that has just um, kind of a rough end on one side that's how it attached to the earth and if it has a point in the top and it's just flat or kind of strange on the bottom just kind of blunt and a little bit rough um, that's okay. That means that the energy for this quartz is going to go straight up or wherever you point it. You can use, use this as a pointer. You can use this to direct energy. I use it. I use mine to direct, um, healing energy like Reiki through it. That does not program it. It's okay to use for that. Um, some are better than others at directing energy. Um, uh, let's see. So if you so if you have a single termination, that is good to direct energy. If you have one that's um, energetic, like there's a point at the bottom and at the top also, that means it's a flow of energy and an exchange. You can have more of a divine communication with that. If you have an, a, a quartz crystal where there's two together and they're kind of fused together, then that means... Um, there's uh that's the energy if it's just two only that could be a mother and son or or a father and daughter or father and son mother and daughter you know it could be those kind of energies you know for maybe a single parent with a child especially if the second one is really small and the and the main one is really big or it could mean soulmates it could be one that you can use for helping you attract to you your twin flame or your or your true love or a true love a soulmate we have many many soulmates we only have one twin flame but many many soulmates so it could also be used 
to help to clear energy between you if you are in a relationship. So uh, basically, double quartz is for couples, relationships of all kind, bringing to a soulmate or a twin flame or to help something, you know, like a marriage that's already in existence, right? Or a relationship. You don't have to be married to use a quartz, obviously. But um, sometimes a quartz crystal will have inside it um, an occlusion, which is kind of a cloudy part. And sometimes that's called a phantom Sometimes there's a secondary crystal inside that's a phantom. And I believe that that can help you more with spirit communication and, um, you know, basically telepathy with people beyond, you know, people who have passed before you. So if you want to talk to your, your relatives or people who've gone before you, like Albert Einstein, even though you didn't know him personally, that maybe, you know, I think the phantom crystals can maybe help you have a clearer communication, you know, if that's your aim. So, um, what does a quartz clear, a, a, a quartz crystal that's clear do? Whether it's clear or occluded, it doesn't matter. The quartz crystal helps to clear your energy of your aura. You can use it to clear your chakras. It can clear a room. It can clear out all negativity. You have to clean it with water or smoke or breath or the sunshine after you've cleared a room with it. You can grid your whole house with a series of crystals that will just absorb negativity and then you put it under the sun or running water to release the negative energy. Again, this does not program the crystal. It's just what it's good for. Uh, Quartz crystals are good for um, if you're doing magical work and you stand in a circle you put them at different, the five points of the star would be where you would put the crystals and that will help amplify your magic. Clear quartz will amplify any energy that you have um, that you are using at that moment. So if you have, say, um, any of the other stones and you add a quartz crystal, that can double or triple or quadruple the energy depending on the size of it it can help lend power to the other stones that you're working with so it can help uh, cleanse and clear your body you can aid it can aid in healing Um, if you have a headache you could put a clear quartz over your uh, third eye or wherever the headache is felt Um, you put over um, anywhere where you're feeling um, pain And a lot of times it will clear out the inflammation. It'll clear it out. So, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah. If you get a quartz crystal family, where there's a cluster of crystals, a whole bunch of them that could be used to communicate with your ancestors, or it could be used to have clear communication between you and your family living with you. So if you find happen to find one that has 10 crystals, two big ones and 10 and eight little ones, that might be if you have eight children and you know your husband and wife, maybe that's yours, right? If you have five kids and you found a crystal that's a cluster of five, that will be to help clear the energy between your children. Help them to have better, clear uh, communication and energy and love between them. Right. Again, you have to constantly, I mean, every week, clear your crystals. Make a day of it every Sunday if you're using them actively. If you use them to grid your house, still clean them out every time you get a chance. Uh, Well, I mean, like once a week. Um, Okay. So rose quartz, this one is quartz. And uh, you don't, you can't really see through it the way you can with regular quartz. But rose quartz is love issues. So if you want to have more love and more compassion for yourself and you don't love yourself enough, rose quartz can help you do that in a very sweet, loving and gentle way. It's it's a very gentle stone. It can heal you gently. It can heal anything like from headaches to stomach aches. It can help heal your heart. 
If you have heart issues like physical heart problems, it can help you with a broken heart. If you've gotten out of a relationship or you're trying to get over, if you have grief and you want to overcome your grief, especially if it's um, the death of your mother, uh, rose quartz is a mother stone. It's very feminine in nature and it will help you to feel um, a connection with your own mother. And it's a stone I've given to my mother and grandmother before. It's um, one that can help you have more love for yourself and for other people. And it can bring and draw love to you. Physically, it's good for your heart and your blood. It can cleanse your blood from toxins um, energetically. Now, amethyst is a purple stone. It's for the third eye and your crown chakra. It's for higher vibrations. It's good to meditate and ask um, for a clearer connection with God, your higher self, your spirit guide, um, your holy guardian angel. Amethyst is a really good stone for that. It can help relieve anxiety Rose quartz can too, but I would, I would say amethyst because it kind of brings you to the opposite end of the spectrum of where anxiety tends to rest in your lower chakras. Amethyst will bring you all the way to the top of your crown. And so it will bring you, um, a gentle relief from anxiety. Even if you let it sit for a minute and then you pick it up and it's cold, that coolness will calm you. You know, and you can hold that up to wherever you're feeling anxiety and ask it. And it might start to vibrate and pull the anxiety right out of you. So, um, citrine is an orange stone that alleviates depression. And it also can bring a beautiful happiness and joy to you. It is good to use to clear out old issues of identity. It helps to get rid of um, negativity that you've had about yourself when you have personally attacked yourself emotionally. It can help um, transgender people through their transitions and it can help them with the physical, emotional, and spiritual changes that come about with the transgender changes through the surgeries, the reassignment, the um, taking of the hormones. A citrine can help bring more joy to your life and help you to feel like yourself, who you truly are. It helps you connect with your yourself at your core and your identity of who you are. Okay. It helps you also energetically recharge and energize. If you have no energy and you can't do anything, I mean, go get as many citrines as you can and just hold them in your hands or put them in a circle around you or line them on your chakras. Just help energize you, put them around your head. Citrine is a stone that will help you get up and go. It will give you a positive charge. Um, Whereas rose quartz can go either way. It can give you a little bit of a charge or calm you down. Um, and amethyst will calm you down. It will gently relax you, but citrine energizes you. Now, if you have an ametrine, which is in the middle of amethyst and citrine, what that one, so it's like half, those are cool rocks found in Brazil. They will uh, be half orange and half purple. So it will balance out your energies. If you have too much energy, it will calm you down. If you have very little energy, it will energize you up and it will do both the things I just told you about all of those things. So if you have um, addictions, citrine are really good to work with. Um, to help you overcome addictions. I'm getting the energy that they are good for cleansing the liver and gallbladder and even your spleen when you're having autoimmune disorder because you've beaten yourself up too much emotionally and it resulted in a physical disorder. So if you've been in an abusive relationship or you've had an angry or evil boss, if you've been fired, if you have 
the negative energy from bad situations citrine is a really happy stone it can achieve help you achieve happiness again now say none of that is um, what you relate to but you want to bring more money into your life and luck manifestation of what you want citrine is a really good stone for that to bring a higher vibration into your life so that you can readily a- achieve the wealth and abundance that you so desire okay now uh, with uh, obsidian obsidian stones there is a uh, golden obsidian might bring spirits to you from the astral world so be careful with those kinds of obsidian with a golden obsidian beautiful stone if you don't know what you're doing you'll bring uh entities right to you good bad or indifferent you'll bring them into your house you might have spirits flying around and you might not get a settled night for a while until you can get the spirits out but a regular black obsidian it's caused of course by volcanic activity like much of these stones are and it can repel negativity obsidian is a really good stone is to work with especially if you are a native person if you're tribal and you want to connect with the earth in a really powerful way this is something that will ground you connect you to the earth and it will repel people that are not of a like vibration is you especially if you have obsidian arrowheads around you and you can ask um, them to make sure anyone who's negative can stay away right I bought a bag of these a long time ago obsidian arrowheads like a hundred I think of them and they're in my house in Detroit and no one's gone in my house I don't think that it shouldn't belong there and I will see when we go back but I did a lot of magic there before I left. Hopefully it's still there. I keep asking God, send the angels there. Keep bringing the energy, you know, renew it. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't been there in three years. So, but according to my neighbors, they're like, yeah, no one's there. No one's going in. No one's going out. Someone did send me a picture that the door was open and he shut it and locked it behind him. And no one had been in there. I'm like, whoa, that's how I left it. It's so strange. Even though some people had lived there for a while. But I know that these obsidians and arrowheads I have in there, they, it repels negativity. So it's pretty cool. Now, snowflake obsidian, not only... Well, what happens with snowflake obsidian, they're different. Obsidian will repel the negativity, get the negativity out and get people away from you that are negative or that don't have your best interests in mind. But the snowflake obsidians, these are adorable. It's like a black, shiny stone with uh, little snowflakes little white spots they're like puffy snowflakes and this one will pull in negativity and put out positive energy and it's one of those rare stones that never need be cleaned you don't have to worry about cleansing it energetically because it does it itself black tourmaline that has white streaks of tourmaline in it um, where it's black and white and combined Same thing, it will take out the energy of a room really fast. Cleanse your aura really fast. Black tourmaline will pull in the negativity and put out only positivity. It's a self-cleansing stone, just like snowflake obsidian. Now, selenite is excellent. Selenite ranges in color from a very pale, um, almost like a flesh-colored or pinkish peach color all the way to white and somewhat clear but selenite is it's a beautiful stone they make wands out of this a lot um, to cleanse people's auras you could clean keep your aura in your room clean you can never put it under running water it will melt it my oldest was cleansing um, all of his stones one day when he was very little and And I always bought my kids uh, crystals and gems, you know, not gemstones, but crystals and minerals, rocks to play with um, energetically so they could see, you know, what they're for on their own and discover it on their own. I'd tell them what it's for, but then they would be like, no, this one means this. Okay, good. That's what it means for you. That rock is specifically for you with that meaning, right? So 
but yeah, my oldest was running all the gemstones or all of her, I keep saying gemstones, crystals underwater. And oh my God, my wand is melting. Don't get it out of the water quick. Dry it quickly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it will, they will whittle down to nothing under the water. It's, it's not good. Turquoise is a really spiritual stone. It could communicate, help you communicate with the great spirit or God, you know, uh, spiritual guides and your higher self. It will connect you to your soul's purpose. There is uh, a peace and a harmony in the turquoise stone, which is why a lot of Native Americans wear turquoise, especially from the Southwest area. There, The stones are found there. They're also found in Tibet, and you could get Tibetan turquoise, which is a lot more pale, minty green, and the turquoise in um, Arizona, for example, is a lot more of the turquoise color. This more on the blue spectrum, but there's a lot of different kinds of turquoise. You know, buffalo turquoise is like white. They call it sometimes white buffalo turquoise. Sometimes it's white and blue. I've seen turquoise that's white, blue, and kind of a tan, and that grounds you to the earth and connects you to your spirit as well as connects you to the prime creator and your higher, you know, your angels. So it's like, it depends on what kind of uh, turquoise you get. Soda light is good if you need to speak your truth and it's well hidden and you're, you are a writer. It helps you have better conversation. It helps you communicate. It's good for people that are shy and timid. Um, all right. And I'm channeling all this information tonight directly from divine. So you may not find some of these meanings in the actual websites or books. Okay. By the way, but so light is connecting you to your, um, sometimes your third eye, mostly your throat chakra. So if you like a throat chakra as well as third eye, you can communicate and bring ideas from the upper realms down through soda light. Um, that's what you know, I'm being told right now. That's pretty cool, right? All right. So lapis lazuli is kind of the same thing as soda light as far as what it will do. But you have to be very careful with lapis lazuli because it's um, it's blue, but it's bright blue and it attracts sexual activity of a love nature that will bring um, good results, basically very fertile. It's a very, very fertile stone. The ancient Egyptians not only used this as a stone of communication, but they also used this as a stone to communicate with the potential spirit of their next child. <laughs> and so it's very... It's, it's for creative types and art artists, but boy, if you wear a lot of lapis lazuli or ha have it around, chances are you're going to have a child soon, whether you're a man or a woman that might help you communicate on other levels with your next child spirit, but you can use it. If you are wanting to be fertile and you want to have a baby, this stone will help you communicate with the highest possible soul that you want to come in. So it could help you. But be careful if that's not what you want. It's a beautiful stone most people are attracted to because it's so pretty. But <laughs> you got to just, you know, watch it. <laughs> Malachite is a very gorgeous stone. But be very careful with it because it's poisonous. If you wear it against your skin, it can seep in. It's like the poison from the stone will seep into your skin over time. So you have to be very, very careful with malachite. It's one of those stones kind of best left um, on a shelf that you don't touch a lot. Don't ever, ever have it around children that will just pop it in their mouth and suck on it like candy. If you have toddlers, just don't even have malachite. Um, a lot of people, I'm not going to talk about how to do this, but a lot of people make gem elixirs. And when you make a gem elixir, if you do it with malachite, that elixir becomes very poisonous. So don't ever do it with malachite you would have to put the malachite inside of a glass jar seal the top and then put that whole thing in and it becomes an energetic gem elixir we're not going to talk about those today but someday i will talk about gem elixirs how to make them and what they do um how to use them basically 
So Malachi can help you with issues of the heart if you have been broken hearted, especially if you broke up and that person took your money or cost you a lot of money and you're just like broken as a person on financial as well as emotional levels that will help you with that. Um, it is a heart stone. It will connect you with your heart's desire. Um, it'll help you organize what you want in a love. It will also help you organize yourself in a business. If you need to understand the intricate workings of a business and you just bought a business or you're just getting into it, this, this actually might help you organize your thoughts so that you can understand what's going on in that industry or in that company. And it also helps you with your business dealings and your finances, and it will bring more money to you. It, it calls money. But also, if it's your heart's desire to have that money, right? Malachite is, it's a higher vibrational stone because it's green. And, you know, it's green color money and all that. But it will pull in, it'll pull in your, so if you're doing your passion, it will be more likely to pull in money than if you're doing something that's not your passion or something that's dishonest, it won't help you. But if it's something that you want to do and you're really happy to be doing it, Malachite will pull it in and help you always connect to your passion on that level. Okay. Um, Moonstone is helping you to subconsciously release negativity and fears and releasing the traumas of anything that's happened to you in your past, including past lives. Moonstone's also a connection stone to the goddess energy and the feminine divine. It can, and or Malachite, by the way, can help you with masculine divine connection. Turquoise can go either way, feminine or masculine. And, um, I think it, you'd have to feel it out for what you think when with a stone. Um, uh, yeah, black tourmaline is a, is it masculine or feminine? It's not masculine or feminine. Obsidian, is it masculine? Yes, obsidian is masculine. Snowflake obsidian is feminine. Um, citrine, is that masculine? Yes. Citrine is masculine. Amethyst is feminine? Yes. Uh, rose quartz is feminine? Definitely. And, and, and clear quartz is Neither. It's neutral gender um, energy. So hematite. Have you guys ever seen hematite? I love this stone. It's one of my most favorite stones. A hematite is, it's really good for um, anxiety and depression to calm those down. It can balance your emotions if you feel like you're just, you know, almost like if you're really moody, if you're really like, off the charts with your emotion. You're laughing one minute, crying the next. If you're super hormonal when you're pregnant, it can help you with that. It can also help detox and purify your blood. It's good for your heart, of course, because the emotions. It also is a very good manifestation stone because it looks like a molten liquid rock and it also looks like metal. So it's almost like It looks like it's liquid, like mercury, like it's just going to roll off the table, but it's solid. So it's a a really magical manifestation energy stone. It has the energy of the earth, so it's very grounding. It can harness the energy of the earth and bring about your manifestations really rapidly. It's also good for emotional pain as well as shock and trauma. If you've been through something really, like whether it's a physical accident or an emotional shock, someone died and you just not, it won't help you necessarily connect to the grieving process the way that rose quartz would, but it will help you through the shock of that or the trauma energy. Uh, PTSD um, is helped a great deal by... uh, this stone. Now, labradorite, this is a magical stone. Labradorite should be in every magician's or witch's 
closet, right? Or, or on your nightstand or on your altar, or at least in your hands at night when you sleep. Labradorite, they're very special stones. They will help you astral travel, communicate with people in heaven, even with ETs. They will help you communicate with beings from other worlds <laughs> and other dimensions. And they can help you with timeline hopping as well. They can help you settle into the new timeline really quickly is what divine is telling me right now. They're also very good to use for clairvoyance and telepathy. Ooh, he just said, and if you're trying to levitate basically any superhuman powers, Labradorite is your stone, which means I'm going to go get more. <laughs> Um, they can help you with your third eye chakra and your crown. They can help you become a seer into the past, the future, or if you've timeline hopped, they will help you see real quickly what's changed in your environment. Did you go up or down in timeline? Cause you know, your next highest one up is 2% different, usually in a positive way. And if it's 2% different in a more negative way, then you got to raise your vibration Cleanse your Labradorite if that happens and, and you've gone down a timeline <laughs> or, you know, dimensional energy shift. If it's gone down, be careful with that. Um, this can also balance out your hormones and God's also tell me your endocrine system. So he's saying anything like thyroid, um, pineal gland, uh, pituitary gland. If you're having um, hormonal issues, this, this will help with that. Now, angelite, this is a very sweet stone. It's kind of, um, if you've mixed, if you can mix, uh, the, a blue food coloring in milk <laughs> and get that gentle baby blue, just the sweetest baby blue. That is the color of angelite. Angelite is a very beautiful stone. It's, um, a stone of spiritual awareness and meditation. You can meditate Labradorite, but it's a little bit harsher than the Angelite. Angelite is very gentle. If you're just easing yourself into the spiritual realms and you just woke up into spirituality, Angelite is a delightful stone to work with. I would say work with Rose Quartz and Angelite if you're opening up to spirituality now and you're new to it. Angelite is good to communicate with your angels, your holy guardian angel. You can, maybe you want to work with your romance angels, use angelite and rose quartz for that. If you want to overcome grief and you need gentleness around you, the energy of gentleness, then you want the energy of this gorgeous baby blue stone angelite. It brings compassion to you helps you to love yourself more. It is for writers who are very shy. It helps you to speak your truth and it brings you the energy of honesty, but gentle honesty, gentle truths. It won't bring in harsh truths that will shock or hurt your system the way some other darker stones will. It will also help you align and clear your throat chakra. I am being told now it's good for thyroid and parathyroid and sympathetic nervous system. Gentle nerves. It will help calm your nervous system if you have problems with the nerves. Even if you've drank too much coffee and you're like too jittery, Angelite will calm that right down. If you have a lot of them, the, you can just put them on your body over your torso, like your stomach and um, solar plexus area will calm uh, digestive disorders. Although I do recommend, of course, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in a half a glass of water, followed by a half a glass of straight water chaser, because you don't want to hurt your teeth. You got to rinse your mouth out after you have apple cider vinegar or any vinegar. Um, but it will help your digestion faster. But if you have Okay, God's showing me if you have a stomach ache because you're scared or you're shy or someone has confronted you and you're scared of the confrontation, if you're very, very introverted 
angelite is your stone and you put that over your solar plexus or your stomach if you're having stomach issues due to emotions also if you have colonic issues like um, irritable bowel syndrome based on your emotional um, if you have emotional imbalances it will help all your digestion energy it'll help you digest your food by calming your emotions down so your body can do its job that's what God's telling me. So even if this stuff, uh, all this stuff that I've just given you is directly from God. I honestly, I was going to, I had a couple websites queued up and I didn't even look at them this whole time because God just wanted to tell you what these are for. Um, Labradorite can help you see into side dimensions. It's kind of a stone of God's telling me that one's like a drug stone. Like if you, like to explore with drugs you're a shaman and you do psychedelics labradorite will help enhance psychedelic drug use so it's not for the faint of heart it's for people who are very very well versed and experienced in the um sacred arts of magic and uh spell casting um but it won't help you with spell casting of actual spells it will help you with like more like clairvoyance telepathy those kinds of um magical things as i'm saying that i'm getting a um a vibration just vibrating inside um my uh just to the right of my belly button i don't know what that means but i just i just like felt like a cell phone vibrating inside me right there right when i said that so i think that's a spiritual confirmation and that's being uh amplified right now it's vibrating more because my I have my um, quartz crystal next to me that's a weird feeling it's like kind of a it's vibrating now oh this is weird I don't even know what this is okay God's told me I I just somehow opened up a portal in my torso (laughs) is this good he's saying yes it's a good thing it's a portal for cleansing my all of my digestive issues Two days ago, I finished my Jello thing. I was telling you guys I was doing hot Jello, and by the way, that's the end of the crystal lesson for today. I'll I'll bring you uh, information on further crystals and stones in the future. But that's for today. It's all she wrote (laughs) on that one. But um, so she, me, me at this point. Uh, That's weird. God just told me about this portal. It's a spiral. It looks like the spiral arm galaxy in my mind's eye. And it's like spiraling out. Now I'm getting burnt. I'm just burning up. Uh, Okay. He's saying it's burning up the toxins in my body now. So there you go. And the quartz crystal, my quartz crystal is helping me with that right now. So see, you can, you can open up portals. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with these. But just be careful. Always surround yourself with guardian angels. Clear your energy and your space before working with crystals. Um, Just see where it takes you. And if you start to work the crystal and you're getting negative results or no results, maybe then cleanse it. Just go ahead and cleanse it again. Start over. (laughs) Back to the old drawing board, you know. So there it is as far as the crystals are concerned. Um, Yeah, I was going to tell you about the jello thing. I did it for six months every day. I had hot jello tea. And I have now healed that. I was told by my spiritual healing team that it's done now. I, I've healed my um, leaky gut syndrome. It's gone. I don't have it anymore. When I test muscle testing for it, it's gone. So yay, my hair has come back. It's natural color almost all the way. Now I'm going to fix the rest of the way with uh, probably with minerals. So I've got to go find a good mineral supplement this week. So, well, there you have it. That's... Uh, Another episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. I love each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Adam, for subscribing to me on YouTube (laughs) and all the rest of you who have subscribed and liked and shared with your Facebook groups and the like. Thank you so much. And like and subscribe or star or whatever it says, wherever you're listening to this, just so I know you're there and that you're listening and That helps me and also helps you to find out when new shows have been published. All right. I still need your spirit stories. I got one more day. 
I'm actually tomorrow. So you have until around uh, noon tomorrow to give me your ghost stories and spirit stories. Otherwise, I'll save them till next year. So that's it. <laughs> and after that, no more. All right. I love you guys. I thank you for listening. I love each and every one of you. I'm sending you all love and healing energy. Don't forget, you can always ask your higher guides to be connected to the healing grid that surrounds planet Earth. Um, I have connected several people recently um, to the grid. Uh, they know who they are. Riley, you're one of them. Um, I have uh, sent a lot of love and healing to people who need it. So when you let me know, I will do it. Otherwise, just say, hey, higher self, connect me to the healing grid. Bada boom, bada bing, there you go. All right. So whatever you guys need, it's there for you. We're in the fifth dimension now. Life is a lot easier and it's going to get more and more so as you let go of the past and accept where you are right now and program your future the way you want it to be. And you're going to get everything you want. You're going to bring that good luck to you. You're going to accept everything and bring good luck to you. All right. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'll be back with all new original programming tomorrow and <laughs> just as usual. So that's it. Signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Until next time, guys. Peace. Do you ever wish you could look into the next chapter in your book of life and see what's coming next? What does the universe have in store for you? I can help you with that. I will give you a Celtic cross reading, which is 10 cards, or you can ask me three questions and I use three cards per question. So that's nine cards, or I can channel your higher guidance, or maybe God directly for you. Maybe you want to talk to your dear departed Aunt Edna, because maybe you have a few questions and she was the smartest person you knew. If you're deceased relatives are available or your ascended masters, I can channel them for you personally. Let me have one hour to show you the future in your next chapter of your book of life. Readings are $75 and it takes me an hour to an hour and a half to complete. And for this price, you will also be hooked up to the healing grid around the planet for free, which means yours truly, me, I will be giving you Reiki 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. All you have to do is let me know, metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com, and we will explore your future together.